According to a new KPMG report, one in seven UAE consumers refuse to sign up to loyalty programs because they don't want their data to be tracked. Well, today on AB Live, we will be discussing the business model of loyalty programs. And for that, in the sets, we have Sanjeev Gill and we also have Omer Gurel. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Sanjeev, let me start with you. So uh, you're from Collinson Group. So tell us more about what you do. Okay. Uh, Collinson first opened offices here in Dubai in 1996. Um, and we've been here for, for that period of time and, and work with many of the leading brands um, and businesses here, not just in Dubai, UAE, but mm -hmm. across the region, Saudi Arabia and the GCC. Um, we are a customer experience and um, travel loyalty um, experiences company. Um, we work with globally. We have over 2,000 employees within the Collinson Group. Okay. Um, we work with over 1,400 banks, 90 plus airlines, and 20 plus hotel groups. All right. Um, and that's on a global level. So our business is loyalty. So that's the sector you essentially cater to: banks, airlines, and. They're hotels. the they're the main ones. Okay. Um, but yes, there are others um, that we any, anywhere where there's a natural fit and there is a requirement for loyalty. Then yes, we we, we do. Uh, for instance, retail. All right. Um, is obviously um, very very um, important in this region. Yeah. Um, and, and and also globally. So there is not a given sector that we work with and we don't work with. Mm -hmm. um, it's where there is a need and where we can help our clients grow and develop and and and, and grow their business. Well, for sure, I think we need to define loyalty also in this entire aspect of the discussion we are having. But before that, Omer, just coming to you. So, repeat, uh, you call yourself the world's first smart re uh, loyalty platform. Sure. What exactly do you mean by that? Um, it's, it's very much a startup. So, that vision evolves um, from time to time. So, um, since the last six months, I like to say that we're the world's first personalized pricing focused technology company with uh, price integrity at our core. Mm -hmm. So what that means is uh, we believe that best prices should go to the best customers mm -hmm. and, uh, and that can be determined from merchant to merchant individually. Okay. And it needs to be a reciprocal relationship. By giving you a better price, you need to be generating more revenue at the same time for the, for the merchant. And how do you achieve that? How do you manage to <coughs> give a good price? Sure. Um, so in any transaction, there is you know, a buyer and a seller. And uh, your past behavior mm -hmm. needs to determine your future price. So right. if you've been a good customer in terms of, let's say, a frequency mm -hmm. or spending, if you've done that in a good way, that was an outlier, mm -hmm. that was extraordinary, uh, then you should get a better price. Right. Ex extraordinary behavior is the key over here because by rewarding ordinary behavior, you actually displace revenue. All right, interesting. So uh, just coming to Collinson again, so can you give me a few examples of the offerings that you have as Collinson to the different brands and different outlets that you cater to? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the fundamentals of loyalty, um, if we go back in time and, and history and the origins of loyalty, it's a points and prizes type um, sort of relationship. Um, I think Omar has mentioned a, a, a very key point here um, in terms of his business, mm -hmm. um, which is not dissimilar to, we could apply those same principles to um, the, the airline vertical, the, the hotel vertical, the retail um, or, or banking for that matter. Um, and what we offer is there is no one size fits all mm -hmm. um, approach. Um, I think the uh, repeat business is, is, is a very niche, very specialist, very targeted business model that um, um, is, is, is being operated. Um, but when we talk about some of the larger brands and the, and, and the programs that we've designed and developed, what's fundamentally key is what are the business objectives, what are we trying to achieve, and what sort of behavior are we trying to drive. Um, and you know that, that comes back down to um, that, that's what it's, what's in for the business. Why does a business want to um, run a program, mm -hmm. have a program in the first place? Um, what you can't discard and what's equally important is who are you who are you creating this program for? It's the customer. Right. So that comes, that brings me to the point of, we spoke about what the, the businesses want, yes. but what exactly do the customers want, Nomer? Because again, you deal with uh, different verticals. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it that you've noticed that the customers of today want? Um, 
I think the idea that I said, the best price is getting the best customers, is a, is a, is a very infectious idea. Mm -hmm. Because what I've seen is um, everybody I've spoken to believes that, you know, if they go three times a week to a place and somebody goes once every six months, yeah. they should get a better deal. Right. Right? So, uh, in terms of what they want, that's, that's, that's a very, that's something that they really want to have. Right. So, um, uh, what I would go one step further and actually also add, is that um, especially with our generation, the whole idea of fairness is, is something that's becoming much, much more important as well. Okay. Um, I think with price integrity, which is the second part of our business, that's exactly what we're trying to uh, push forward as well. Right. So can I just ask you this, according to your business model, is price the, the only or rather the, the main element of loyalty? Um, I think, um, first of all, I mean, I'd, maybe it's going to be a little bit controversial, but I would say that uh, loyalty actually is something that is done by the business itself, mm -hmm. by doing their fundamental core uh, business well. Okay. Right? So if you make a good cup of coffee and if you um, smile to your customers and if you serve them quickly and do it at a reasonable price, mm -hmm. that becomes a habit-forming venue that you want to go to anyway. Right. So loyalty is a build on, on that where it enhances the value further. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're not getting the basics right, loyalty is not really going to help you. Right. It's like, um, I mean, it's like, uh, how can I give an example? It's like smoking two packets of cigarettes a day and then taking a vitamin C tablet and thinking that it's going to actually prevent uh, lung cancer. <laughs> right. So I, I, would, I would go a step further um, because loyalty today, um, whilst you say price, and that's one component. That's a very transactional based relationship. Mm -hmm. And again, for a certain business with a specific objective and targets, that may be the right approach. Um, when we look at loyalty programs and we, we, we look at um, what the demands are, again, coming back to the customer, customers are changing. They have become more savvy. Mm -hmm. um, online businesses, online only businesses have disrupted the, uh, the marketplace um, in terms of how loyalty would be traditionally regarded. Yeah. But just to, to, to sum up and, and, and sort of give you a, a flavour of what we mean by that customer experience, customer relationship is, is it starts way before a purchase. Mm -hmm. And true loyalty is more a case of it can be pre-purchase, it can be um, online product reviews um, where these days it's not the glossy brochures and what the brand is telling you it's what real life experience is telling you because it's so easy totally. to go online get <coughs> real views mm -hmm. of real people um, which are key influencers and, 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 and can actually make the decision for you which is why social media perhaps plays a very important role in all of this right absolutely absolutely and it's not something that can be ignored however we don't treat social media as this new world and, and, and something that sits outside of, of, of loyalty. Mm -hmm. um, you know, within loyalty, and we, we, we talk about the programs, you've got the technology, mm -hmm. which makes the experience and the operational side of the program, it helps you run the program. We've then got data, we touched on data, um, and then we've got communications based on the data and what you've learned about your customers, how yeah. you communicate with them. Um, so social media is just an add-on. Right. Um, I would say. But since we're on the subject, Omer, I'm just going to come to you with this. Um, influencers, do you think they have a huge role to play in everything that um, Sanjeev has just mentioned right now? So he spoke about um, on the lines of word of mouth and how uh, personal interactions do mm. matter a lot. Uh, social media does that and obviously influencers being ambassadors for the platform. Do you think they are important at this juncture? Um. Anybody who says they don't matter is fooling themselves. Let me be, let me be very frank. So um, it's, uh, they do definitely work on certain audiences, but mm -hmm. there's also a lot of people among, uh, around me mm -hmm. that don't even have Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. So, and we do. But yeah. No, I, yeah. I do. I, I, there's, I'm seeing a lot of people all spending much less uh, time on them. Okay. Um, around me at least. So, um, but there's also, I mean, it's, it's a fact of life, right? You can't have, you can't have life without social uh, media and you also, and influencers are a part of uh, life. Um, when you have that me time during the day, that 15, 30 minutes, one hour, whatever, when you're between meetings and you're checking out things, mm -hmm. um, seeing a, a football player uh, that, uh, that is like a, 
uh, that is like a mythical creature on the football field uh, acting like a normal human being seeing his life yeah. it's exciting it's yeah. interesting a singer uh, so these all these kind of mythical people that are in the media all the time yeah. watching them and following them it's it's much more interesting i mean yeah. am i going to follow uh, a football player that's uh, living on a private uh, like li practically living on a pri uh, private jet and traveling around the world or, or a bank manager so the reason i ask you this is in terms of this whole conversation we're having right now about loyalty do you think they add to uh, bringing about a brand's loyalty or promoting the loyalty in a huge way um absolutely it can go both ways yeah, um, you I can agree. get a positive review, um, but I will again play devil's advocate here is nice reviews and, and, and good stories don't make news okay. stories. Yeah. Okay? Um, and it's a very important um, aspect and that businesses really need to take seriously. So mm -hmm. in terms of their customer service, how they deal with, with, a, with a complaint or a, a, a bad review. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that we constantly monitor and we constantly look at because one review, bad review could it's far damaging, far more damaging than maybe a hundred good reviews you get because people tend to home in on that negativity. Right. Now, a business can make a mistake and there can, there can be a, a case, for example, let's say in your restaurant business, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that a customer goes to a restaurant but that one time um, has a bad experience. Mm -hmm. The lesson learned from there is, is for me, and, and, and when we manage these programs and it's about having that personalization, understanding your customers, they're not just a number and they're not just a transaction mm -hmm. um, and this is where the data and the purpose of having a loyalty program understand their needs their benefits their um you know their, their preferences is how do you deal with that one bad experience and you can change a negative experience into a positive one because a lot of consumers and particularly in the online space one of the largest bugbearers in something we are commonly is the most convenient way for customers to get their point of view across in these days is social media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not through the customer service, phone calls or the email or website. Right. So how are you capitalizing on that then? Um, it's got to be integral as part of the operational aspects of running a loyalty program. It's not one dimensional. That's the, that's the, the, the message I would say. Right. Is you, can, you, know, you can't focus just in one area. Having a call center and a customer service um, uh, division will not solve all your problems mm. because what's happening to all the online queries and all the online reviews that are happening, mm. uh, you can have a, uh, a multi-channel, omni-channel customer service um, setup. We have that, you know, where all your Facebook, your uh, Instagram, your email, your inbound calls, they're all coming to the same team. For sure. But just since you mentioned the restaurant businesses, I mean, obviously, one of the most oversaturated markets here, especially in the region, I know you deal with a lot of F&B outlets. Um, at this point, do you think loyalty programs can benefit a restaurant business and the business model hugely? Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, but you have to have a difference. We are very focused. We started off 13 months ago with a specific focus on the F&B industry to begin with. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're the world's first dynamic uh, uh, pricing-based uh, uh, loyalty system. So uh, your pricing is very much depending on uh, uh, how much you spend mm -hmm. and uh, how soon you come back. Yeah. And uh, as a result, we've been able to home in on that extraordinary behavior and encourage that extraordinary behavior. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, most loyalty programs have been a cost. Whereas uh, with us, we've been able to increase revenue for most of our customers so somewhere between um, it, anywhere from four to six percent. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, that's, that's actually a very tangible result. That oh, you yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, I can tell you that um, a loyalty program can be beneficial, mm -hmm. but I always say uh, you have to, I agree with you, you have to have a holistic approach and uh, you have to get the fundamentals right. Mm. I believe that it's an enhancer. Yeah. A loyalty program is an enhancer of your core value proposition. Right. But if you don't get your core value proposition, no loyalty program is going to help you no matter what happens. All right, great. So now just coming back to the, the data point that uh, you've been uh, mentioning. <coughs> so uh, one major problem that people have is sharing data, especially now when there's so much conversation around Cambridge Analytica mm -hmm. and how sure. data is being misused, etc. But isn't that one of the key fundamentals of loyalty programs? You try to get information from your customers to personalize services for them essentially. So how do you deal with that challenge? Um, I think you've mentioned a key point there is why do we need the data mm -hmm. and why is it so important um, within a loyalty program. Um, in our business it's the lifeblood of our business. Right. So 
how we communicate, we, 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 we give rewards, benefits, offers to customers. That's the relationship mm -hmm. between the business and the customer. Now, personalization is one, again, one aspect of that, um, that, that process um, of having a loyalty program. But what we always do and, and, and how, where we advise and guide our clients in terms of how to tackle this issue is, um, you know, Customers are only afraid to give their data if they don't know why. Right. And how it's being used, mm -hmm. for what purpose, and more importantly, what, what's in it for me? What's the benefit? Why should I give you mm. my information? Yeah. So, you know, it, it starts there in, the, in, in, in terms of the relationship as far as we're concerned is, as soon as you join a lodge program, whether that's online or whether that's in store, um, it's on an app, whatever it is, um, there's a basic set of data and information that is going to be required and you're expected to give that right so, so just again sorry uh, but the two points that he touched on one is um, why do you need my data and why do you need my information so how do you answer that question to the customers who come to you with that query sure um, in order to be able to price in, in our case we're very focused on pricing so in order for me to be able to price you according to your past behavior I need to know your past behavior right now that's one part of the data now with repeat we chose very, very early on uh, two things. Um, we said that uh, we're not going to have advertising mm -hmm. on our platform. Okay. So you can't pay money to be featured as a restaurant in the top or the bottom or the middle or whatever. Okay. And also, we're not in the business of data sales. Mm. So we have uh, very strong agreements with liquidate, liquidated damages clauses, yeah. uh, which prevent us from uh, selling any data. So okay. we don't sell data and we don't do advertising simple as that right so and all our data is encrypted mm -hmm. and we are also GDPR compliant right. uh, so what happens is that as a merchant uh, the relationship that you have with the with the end user needs to be in such a way that the end user rather than who actually specifically they are they need to be uh, a granular spot that makes up the whole macro data mm. so in other words if I want to know what, what's the people who are coming back to me the second time or the third time, that person's data is relevant in creating that picture. But as a merchant, I shouldn't need your email address or phone number to spam you. Mm, right. So that's, that's the thing. So I think the merchant, the, the end user needs to be okay with giving the data in order to be served better. Okay. So integrity ne very much needs to be the part of the picture. Okay. Um, but uh, but if it's not, then it's a big problem. All That's right. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm a big uh, supporter of um, uh, data being more limited and more protected. I I, I totally believe in that because I sure. hate being spammed. Yeah, exactly. Right. This is what's happening everywhere that you see, without naming brands, but you see it everywhere with oh, most of the social media apps that we use, etc. But two points that you mentioned. One of the points being advertising is something mm. that you don't do. Uh, is advertising a bad word right now? Is is it, has it come to that? No, um, no, it has its place. Um, again, you know, um, loyalty is more direct marketing and more on a one-to-one -one mm -hmm. level, um, if that's one way to describe. And in terms of the comparison to advertising, and advertising being more above the line. So you know, your your TV, your radio, your outdoor uh, billboards, um, they have a place. They have a purpose. Right. Um, and and you know, there'll be a lot of businesses that need to do a balanced um, um, split in terms of creating that awareness, generating that message, um, and, and, and obviously not just um, reinforcing that message with their existing customers, but attracting new customers. Mm. You know, so um, again, social media, digital channels, disruptors, um, we can have that debate, print media versus, versus online. Yeah. Um, it, it's part of the, the, the channel mix, um, and, and uh, if, if that is a requirement and it serves a purpose, then no, it's not a bad word. All right, great. So now, in terms of repeat, what are the main challenges that you've faced with this business model? Um, very good question, uh, first of all. Um, because we're now in month number 14, mm -hmm. so it's one year and two months old. Um, in terms of business model, um, there was a lot of fear in the beginning from uh, the restaurants okay. uh, in terms of uh, partnering up and uh, uh, they very much thought of us in the beginning and that was I, I would say partially our fault mm -hmm. uh, we were not able to differentiate between ourselves 
uh, and what we do, and let's say with all these tens of hundreds of uh, deal applications out there. So they were very much under the opinion and they were under the thought that like, you know, you just join repeat and it just brings you new customers and right. then you give them a discount. That's what the fundamental, uh, with the business model, uh, we, had a, we had an issue. Now, we very much look at it at a very holistic way. Mm -hmm. So we had a pretty much, uh, we, we always had that, but we were just maybe not able to convey it in the best way. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we have uh, perfected that and I very much say to all our clients, when, we, when you join repeat, for the first one month, we try to build a tier structure, a level structure, a reward structure yeah. that you think will be beneficial to your business. And then in the first month, we have to generate data together. Hmm. So in order for me to prescribe you what's your underlying illness or to enhance your performance, first we have to generate data together. Hmm. So it's very much like diagnostics. So when you convince them of that and they realize that they, your, your product needs to be pushed to their customers and they need to use it to generate the data to be able to make better decisions and enhance the whole value proposition further, that's changed it completely. So the most, I would say, the important thing was how to go from you and me to very much us. Right. Me. Okay. So that was, that, was the, that was the main thing. It was not so much of a business model, it was more of a message of who we are and what we want to be and how we want to be partners with you. Yeah, I'm sure like, uh, you probably faced a similar challenge as well, right, in terms of... A absolutely, and you, yeah. can, you can apply that same um, scenario um, where the repeat business model and the technology is serving a business need. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's where the, the, that's where the relationship and that's where mm -hmm. our discussions start. Yeah. Um, as I say, there's no one size fits all. So we always listen to our clients, we always listen to um, what their needs are, what their business objectives are. Yeah. It would be very different from sector to sector, an airline program to a hotel program to Absolutely. a banking program. Um, I guess where we add that value and, and where we can sort of help and, and, and mould and shape the program is um, there's a lot of rich history data information. So we can set benchmarks, industry benchmarks. Uh, we can tell you what good looks like. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, exactly. there's a common question that gets asked by the, normally the finance departments in business, but how much is it going to cost me? Yeah. Um, we can also model and, and, and do an ROI model to say, well, actually, yes, there is a cost of operation, the technology, the, the resources, the the advertising, the marketing, the communications, everything, however, and then there's a cost of rewards. Yeah. Now, what you've got to balance that um, against is what's the upturn? Mm -hmm. So for a loyalty program, what is it generating that goes over and above, let's say, my regular spend? So if a, if a customer is spending X um, dollars with you mm -hmm. per month, per year, per annum, can I change that behavior to increase that by 5%, 10%, 15%. Hmm. So we, we, we look at these programs and, and, and we call them customer dashboards, but um, it's always important, you know, and, and one of the key metrics we look at is we look at member spend versus non-member spend. Yeah. It's a very powerful equation and-, and You're and trying to get more members. And, so. and, and answers that question to yeah. the, to, you know, to, the, to the, the people who are paying for this program right. um, and the companies themselves to justify their means and, and, and why the program is there. So member spend, non-member spend, again, cost of operations, cost of reward, there needs to be obviously a tight control um, and, and, and you need to monitor that carefully because if your metrics are going out of kilter mm. then having a program could actually be costing your business money. Mm. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, is it really worth the investment? It was my question before, but I think you've answered that anyway. But then, um, let's face it, we have a credit card culture here. It's being promoted by banks more than any other entity. Um, so, do you think, with regards to credit cards, it, does that act as a facilitator here when it comes to loyalty programs? Because that's, that's sort of the first examples that I have personally seen in terms of lounge access, points, rewards, etc. So, does that act as a facilitator for you? Um, we have uh, actually uh, two months ago we set up a new division for bank partnerships with okay. Repeat. Um, so to incorporate uh, the bank cards very much into the Repeat journey. And uh, we have made some uh, uh, talks uh, with uh, I would say three to four different banks uh -huh. and we've made a lot of progress. Um, definitely uh, I would say the two big uh, industries that are going to be essential uh, to, to, to our industry um, is first telecom mm -hmm. and then banks. Right. So because by nature of their size and uh, clout, mm -hmm. uh, they have the biggest databases. 
in any country, yeah. up to the government. <laughs> so um, I think uh, as, 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 a, as a universal aggregator slash platform mm -hmm. like uh, us, uh, we don't necessarily build our programs for individual uh, outlets. It's, right. a, it's a shared universal aggregator where everybody's loyalty program is in one place, okay. effectively. That's how repeat is. So just on those lines, so mm. now since you, you're essentially working as a service provider there, mm. right? You, you're providing your services to other outlets and sure. brands. Um, so a lot of big conglomerates, like uh, off the top of my head, the examples that I have is Apparel has Club Apparel, sure. there's Landmark, which has Shukran, sure. etc. So different uh, loyalty programs that are in-house, and they obviously have a better understanding of their customers because they've got their own database Absolutely. From, from ages. So does that prove to be uh, competitors for you? Um, for the time being, yes, but yeah. uh, long run, no. Right. Because I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, I believe uh, that the only reason why an app exists is for convenience mm -hmm. and uh, if I interact or transact with 25 different uh, brands, uh, it's not convenient to have 25 different applications on my phone. Right. Uh, so that's the reason why I believe uh, it's of course much harder to execute, but if you can execute a universal uh, aggregator, right. uh, then uh, then you have a winner. In the ideal world. It's never been done before, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. There is no global universal platform for uh, a lot of uh, um, different verticals in one place. So that is, uh, do you know any? One program that you can use it for pretty much every transaction? One program for every transaction. There are enablers um, okay. out there, and I'm looking for it because like what, uh, some technology and obviously the blockchain te blockchain sure. technology mm. that's new yeah. would be um, uh, a means to mm. have independent run programs, but then on a common ledger where you can mm. transfer and, and, and operate the program. So um, that's probably the only example I can think of right now. But I just want to come back to the the credit card uh, point and, mm -hmm. and um, about the repeat business or any other program for that matter is, they can coexist because oh, yeah. from a customer point of view, totally. on your credit card, you mentioned the lounges, by the yeah. way, Collinson operates the largest lounge network globally, Priority Pass. So, is it? Um, so oh, that's why really? we work with 1,400. I'm a customer. Over 1,400 <laughs> banks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but that, so there's a package around your credit card is the point. So you've got the lounge access, you may get free cinema tickets, you may get cash back, you may be able to redeem it for flights and travel, etc., etc. Um, but when you use that card, let's say on a restaurant platform mm -hmm. through, mm. let's say, the repeat app and purchases, mm. you're earning your points on your credit card, but then you're also getting your discount on exactly. your meal. So right. they do coexist. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. Very interesting. Unfortunately, we're running short on time, but there's so much more to discuss, perhaps in another episode. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you. thanks for sharing your valuable insights with us on the show today. And thank it. you for watching AB Live. We will be back again next Tuesday.